All right, what's going on y'all? Max here with My Kind of Eats. Now today, I got something kind of special. Later today, I'm gonna to meet up with my foodie friend, Layla. She is the food expert here in Saigon. So easy day for me. I just get to meet up with her and she's gonna take us to some of her favorite places, but it's not till later today. So first, I'm gonna start off today. I'm gonna to meet up with another one of my friends. We got Leo here. Hello, you gotta come closer. You're so far away, so far away. So she just got in from Da Nang, right? Yes. And she's gonna actually come with me for breakfast today. I'm gonna to take her to my favorite, Hu Tiu. Yes, Hu Tiu. He got it right. Yeah, she's That's been. That's so good with Vietnamese now, guys. <laughs> she has been pounding me on that pronunciation. I finally got it in time for the video. Um, I know that he knows all the wonderful eats, so you guys stay tuned. It's gonna be a good one. All right, well, uh, pressure's on. We're about to get in here, y'all. Let's get the day started. So I should explain about you two a little bit more. I appreciate it. There's many variations which you can get. We're actually here for the Nam Bang, which is gonna be a Cambodian style noodle that's been Vietnamesified pretty much. So pretty much the Vietnamese have kind of tailored it to their liking. What that is, I went and got mine in the dry version, but Leo here, she went with the wet, wet. She got it all soup version. I don't know, I told her to go dry. We'll see, what she, see how she likes it. The reason I gotta go dry here though is because of the sauce, the special sauce here. Actually, my buddy told me this sauce goes bad within a day, so they actually have to replenish it every single day so you know it's gonna be the freshest. I shamed you into it. I know. That's what I do best. Peer pressure, shamed her into it. Said you gotta have the dry version with this because the sauce is key here. You gotta make sure you can get all that sauce flavor. Now, this U2 is a little more expensive than other places, but I really feel like your money spent is used here because look at these gorgeous prawns on top. You get a ton of the ground pork meat, you get slices of pork, and then you get in there and you get all that awful goodness in there. And I just like having the broth on the side because it's so concentrated and so flavorful. And I like to load as much of that finely chopped garlic in there as I can. I'm telling you, if you don't like garlic, you do not want to be close to me after I eat these bowl of noodles. All right, got a little broth in here. Now it's gonna give these this quick little toss. Oh Lord, touch heaven and dig in. What I love about the Hutu noodles is they're really fun to eat. They're not quite as chewy as maybe like a glass noodle, but they do got a little bit of springiness to them. Got a little bit of chew, but then they dunk them in that sauce and it really retains all the sauce, the soy sauce, the sweetness, the flavor they put in there. And then I'm never messed up when my noodles comes with a sucker like this. Would you look at that? Oh my. That's why I come here. You pay a little bit more, but you're gonna get rewarded for that extra dong. Woo, meet in there. All right, let's do this. Come on, this is liver, guys. You can't be afraid of liver. It's so creamy, it just adds like a, a smoothness to the stringy and all around texture, you know? Ooh, and I finally found it, got the chai blossom here. It gives you a nice subtle garlic flavor, something you see a lot in the Cambodian cuisine, hence these are Cambodian noodle. They've been Vietnamesified, so it makes sense. Definitely enjoy eating this when you can get them. Get it in that legendary Hutio sauce with extra, 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 extra garlic. Mm. You know, I'm really not a big just pork meat guy like that where it's stripped out. It's usually too dry. There so, oh, they don't overcook it. It's a little bit juicy, just been submerged in that broth. Got a great flavor. For me though, it's all about a one-to-one -one meat to sauce ratio. I am addicted to this sauce. It's tangy, it's sweet. It's almost kind of like a barbecue sauce, but not really. And then you just get the loads of garlic in it. See, now we're moving into that sauce mode. Like, I just want everything in the sauce right now. Look at the star of the show here. It's 
bigger. They could easily overcook it, but luckily, the chef has actually been working here for many, many, many years. You're paying for that experience here, y'all. That's perfectly cooked, super fresh, sweet, and delicious. Do you like them? No. I love them! So, first time having dry hotim nambang, definitely a success. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna be eating a lot of this more often. Oh, y'all, it's been good, but we gotta get it perfect now. Go in, get a little chili here, get a little noodle, some of that meat. Oh, that scouring in there for a little bit of money bite. Always a must eat. Do you do what you think? Amazing! Amazing! <laughs> so, if you don't believe me, take her word for it. Y'all, gotta come try this place out. You can just see the locals coming in and out the whole time we are eating. Over here in District 3, one of the most popular you do you can eat in Saigon. She's gotta get her day going, and we gotta meet up with Layla later to eat some more delicious Saigon eats. Okay, so. I was gonna meet my friend Layla, but that day did not work. It absolutely poured here. We are towards the end of rainy season, so still having a lot of trouble where we just get caught in the rain. So today, y'all, it's just gonna be me and you. It's been a while, and honestly, we need this. We need that rekindling phase. We need it just to be me and you and enjoy some delicious food. So, it's actually gonna work out for the best. Now, that being said, I'm right across the street from where I wanna go this morning, and I must say, I am not excited for this. That's right, you heard me right. I'm actually going for a banh mi, but a banh mi which has some ingredients which typically aren't my favorite, but you know how they say don't judge a book by its cover? Well, my motto is don't judge a banh mi by its appearance. So we gotta get in here and try it and see how it truly is. She's super friendly here, got great energy. Let me sit down right here, enjoy this banh mi so I don't have to enjoy it across the street on the sidewalk. <laughs> so what's funny is I may have talked crap about this banh mi too soon. It had two ingredients which I'm not a fan of, which is the shredded chicken. And it's actually got the eggs in here which have not been hatched from the chicken. Those are not my two favorite ingredients, but as I get in here and I dissect this, it looks and smells so much better than I thought it would. You can see she's got huge cloves of garlic in there. She's hitting it with that sauce, which is like a fa lao thick, sweet sauce. And then she's actually giving it a run of pate as well. And what's crazy is her eggs actually almost look like they've been candied or something, but let's get in here. Her baguette is super dense and you can just hear it crisping and crunching as you move it around. Y'all, I feel like a terrible, terrible, terrible person for judging this before ever taking a bite. That is phenomenal. The way the bread is ultra crispy and dense, but her eggs taste almost like a very young century egg. It's just ultra creamy. The way it sticks to your mouth, it's almost like a type of cheese. And you get the pate, you get that falao sauce. Beautiful. You get there down into the fresh vegetables, you get that pop of freshness from the cucumber, you hit a big old clove of garlic, and that will take over the flavor. It's like a flavor packed Vietnamese chicken salad sandwich. The way you get that creaminess from that egg that mixes with that chicken meat, the pate, that flavorful halal sauce. And you see, you see that balao sauce just soaking into that banh mi. That's the bite right there when it soaks in there. You get that creamy egg, get a little bit of everything. This is nothing to sleep on. Don't be like me. Don't judge banh mi by its looks. You get in here, you eat this, you may be surprised. Maybe one of the best banh mi's you ever had. And this banh mi just keeps getting better. As I work here towards the back where she's really stuffed it, you get that spring onion, you get more pate, you get more of that fa lao sauce with the creaminess of the egg. It becomes a decadent little banh mi. Mm. 
and they strategically have the drink stall literally right here. Can't pass it up. Best seller, the iced lemon tea. Oh, with boba. I wasn't expecting it. It makes sense why the straw is so big now. Yeah, I would take that Vietnamese chicken salad bomb me any day. Wow. Blew my mind. I love when I go and eat foods and I kind of have like a thought of what they should be and they're just completely different and just prove me wrong. My favorite eats. Finish my drink and we we'll head that way. Woo, I mean, rainy season has been on me this year. It just stormed so hard. So we had to wait a little bit and I decided to change where I wanted to go. We're over in District 10, one of my favorite areas to eat. So I'm gonna look for a big old fried chicken noodle for y'all. Gotta walk this little street here that's just aligned with places to eat, see if I can find it. Now, hard spot to find. Actually, what you wanna do is you wanna look for dim sum house right here. I'm doing a ton of dim sum stuff, but also got the fried chicken with the noodle, but no sign. So you gotta know what to ask for. A true hole in the wall eat here. Oh, y'all, it was rainy season. It's wet everywhere. So like I said, we're over in District 10, but we're over really right. I don't know if we're in the flower market technically, but we're pretty much in it. This street right here, just a ton of hole in the wall eats. And by hole in the wall, as you can tell, this place doesn't even have a sign. You just gotta know they're doing the fried chicken with noodles. And if you look in here, absolutely packed in here right now. And what's funny is it doesn't look like many people are getting dim sum, they're purely getting the noodles. They are absolutely cranking out the fried chicken noodles. You see one person directly doing noodles, you see one person doing the fried chicken assembly, and everybody in the little assembly line going here. And so I have never seen this before, but it's actually genius. Look at it, they got their broth ready to go. They actually put it into the electric boiler. The same thing you use to heat up water to pour over your coffee or tea in the morning, they're using it to reheat that broth before they dump it back over your noodles. <laughs> it's brilliant. One thing I really admire about Vietnamese people is that entrepreneur mindset. Three pretty young looking bros right here probably didn't have a lot of money, but still do whatever they can to start this business. And it's clearly paying off for them because they are packed right now. There are people lined up waiting for food. There's nowhere to sit on the inside. They doing it and they doing it right. Look at that, that chicken you see. What they've done is actually cut it in half so as you get more of that surface area fried, gonna cook all the way through. Hopefully you're super quick so it won't dry out. Then I got those noodles in that broth. Wanna go ahead and dig into this and dive in before the noodles get mushy. All right, let's do it. We're gonna go kind of cure first and then we'll doctor it up. Oh, this is about to be. Good, cook just a touch al dente, nice and doughy. Give the broth a try. I tell you what I'm really surprised is how it's not salty at all. No salt coming from that. Wow, that's one of the least saltiest broths I've ever had. And sometimes you just gotta leave your manners somewhere else. Gotta actually pick this up with my hand and go for it. Yeah. That's why people are coming here. Wow. That fried chicken's leather coming here, that is extremely juicy. A tad bit on the drier side, that's how locals like it, that's okay. It's not bad at all. I think it's actually nice and in between, but wow. That's why you would come here. Ooh, ooh. That is something special. That crunch is intense on the outside. You can hear it crunching, and then it's still just nice and juicy on the inside. All right, let's go. Got a sauce here, I have no clue what it is. A little mysterious sauce bite. Looks like a little bit thicker, a little syrupy. Looks like it's got some fat drippings in there as well. It's sweet, it's got some oil, a definite soy sauce flavor, but it's got this little fruitiness coming from it. I don't know why, but I'm getting something almost like a little strawberry or raspberry, something that gives you that tartness. That mysterious sauce, I have no clue what that is. I'm gonna have to bring a local back to figure out what that is. That with the fried chicken. Dang. I thought the fried chicken alone was good enough to come back here. When you put that sauce on it, take it to another level. And 
And I'll say it one more time, if that noodle and broth was even remotely close to how delicious that fried chicken and sauce are together, I mean, I might as well just move in. Hey, if you just want a big old hunk of some delicious fried chicken with some sauce, this is the place to come. That is so cheap. I didn't realize it was gonna be that cheap. Okay. Okay. They convinced me. I'll come back here. These are just some of my favorite areas to explore for food in Vietnam, because you'll see right here, these are actually living quarters as well. So it's almost like, if you took like food courts and you put them below where everybody lived, that's what these areas are like. They're where you really want to come in Saigon and explore for food because, well, you get the best payoff for finding delicious food with a minimal distance walk, which is always a win-win, right? Yeah, so literally the place I wanted to go, over here, not open. We'll go right over here. Welcome to Saigon. Like I said, love this area. You don't ever have to walk far to find delicious food. Now the only thing is, because that place is closed, we're not gonna get a suite in. Instead, we're gonna go for Bok Ha, which I'll, I'll show you a little bit more detail when it gets out here. Now one of the reasons I love this place is because they do not lack in the sauce department. There you go, Tim. I also love it coming in the clay pot. I feel like it helps the flavor. That may be placebo effect. It may just be nostalgia, but I love it. This place has been open since 1975. The owner's actually really nice. He speaks a little English here, and they're always kind of trying new things. I came here one time, and they had a clay pot rice where they take the bok mixture and dump it on top. So they're kind of changing it up a little bit, doing some new takes on stuff, while still sticking to the traditional things as well. Where are you going, Tim? What sauce do you find? Pepper salt. It's pepper salt, man. This and lime, that's it. That's all you need. I'm a hoisin and their chili oil is on fire. Not from the heat because it's so delicious and has such a depth of flavor. Now, baka actually translates to something your grandmother made. No, I'm just completely kidding, but it really is something like that. It's a stew with the beef, it's got the carrots, it's got the onions, it's got everything in there with all those seasonings, and it's been cooked for an extremely long time, and you gotta let all those flavors just marry and come together. The only way to go, man, look at that gravy. Look at that. Mm. Good sauce, great sauce. That's slurpable sauce. It's sure. slurpable. I can drink this thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a back, beef stew back home, beef from a simmer. It's so hot right now. <laughs> the reason I love there is just a little bit thicker, really intense beef flavor, and just really, really, I've said this already, but it really tastes like something your grandmother would make. You just cook so much love here. Tendon, parsley, look at the jiggle. I mean, it's meat and tendon. Oh my God, this is the very one. Oh. <laughs> this is it, man. That's why you come here. Uh, can I get two more? That's good brisket meat. Shoot, chewy, such a... The sauce is so good. That sauce is so good. I've never seen Tim eat bread so fast. He's eating his vegetables. You know it's gotta be good to him. Finger looking good. Ooh, I need that chili, chili, chili oil. Meat sauce, have your bread sauced up, ready to go. Dude, and it's the atmosphere. You give me beef like this, with a delicious stew, and then sauce on sauce on sauce, there's a reason they've seen my face a few times here. Absolutely crushed it, y'all, and it's about how the day is gone. It's starting to rain again, so I'm about to call Gobia and sprint home. No sweets today, so, ah, my heart's kinda hurt. I guess I'm just gonna have, I don't know. Y'all, that's it, absolutely delicious. We crushed it. Whoa, kinda how the day's gone. I'm about getting splashed on water. Starting to rain again. Oh my goodness, so no sweets today. Kinda hurts my heart, but make up for it next time. Maybe we'll do a lot of sweets. I hope y'all enjoyed it. So Max, my kind of beats. Catch you at the next video.